Welcome everybody to the Frito and Willie Show. I'm your host, Frito Marcelin, and we got your other superstar host in the building, Willie Mac here. Hey man, I'm just continually trying to stay on the right side of the law. <laughs> That's always a good thing. A law includes my wife. I'm trying to stay on that side of the law too. Trying not to get in trouble. That's what's up. Two married uh, men. <laughs> married men chronicles. Listen, I always try to stay on the right side of mine all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I don't want no issues. I, yeah, I want. Yeah, no one that smoke. Nope, nope. You know, no smoke, smoke I, free over here. Right. I don't want more headaches in my life, especially the I one know. that I, you know, I, I just want her to be okay. If that's just one less thing. Yes, and you got two ladies in your house, so I do. You have two ladies in your house, so yeah. I didn't think it would make a difference. Even at this age, it's making a difference. Oh, yeah. I, I can't wait to, like, be calling you at 2 o'clock in the morning, like, dude, I can't do it no more. Help me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2 a.m., and I'm outside of Denny's eating a sandwich by myself. How did this happen? We joking, man. We love y'all ladies. We are, we are very too, uh, we, we are blessed with the families we have and everything, just jokes and everything. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, we just, we just normal cats trying to live out here. Most deaf, man. Most deaf with that, you know. And uh, welcome everybody to this episode. We are coming back at y'all. You know what I'm saying? This is a bit of a catch up, you know, letting y'all know what we've been up to a little bit. I know we've been gone for a little bit. Season two. We, we, we've been gone for a little bit, but uh, we back out. You know what I'm saying? Hey. And uh, hey, yo, man, Willie, man, what's been going on in these streets, man? What's been hopping? What's been popping with you, man? So some big developments. The biggest development is that I finally finished up my master's at George Washington University in data analytics and um, the uh, the Capstone project, which focused on hip hop analytics, was a big success. And uh, in short, man, I'm trying to, you know, trying to turn into something else. You know what I'm saying? So. Y'all, so y'all had me in your thoughts, man, but we trying to, you know what I'm saying, take this hip-hop analysis and hip-hop culture to another level personally, um, not only through these podcasts, with literature, with seminars and all type of things. So get ready. You might see, you know, your boy Willie, your boy Frito doing some other things outside of our usual comfort zones, and we're excited about that. So that's that's number one um, is just finishing that up, but also – just rejuvenating myself. It took a lot out of me the first five, six months of this year. So it just feels good to be a little bit freer, but it don't stop. Just trying to figure out how to transfer that knowledge into something else. What about you, my dog? Yo, man, uh, been just connecting more with the family. You know, I do have to say this. Uh, I'm not much of a TV watcher, but um, I was, yeah, I, you know, my wife, she, she, she definitely loves movies and different types of genres of tv shows and movies and stuff like that but me i'm not big into it but we have been having movie nights as a family um only reason is because i started to we started to watch one division but i didn't watch the majority of the marvel movie oh so it got to the episode it got to an episode where it's like she's like yo he, you gotta go back and watch them and <laughs> yeah it's like, not connecting the way it should connect and I was just like, do I? And she's like, yeah, we, we got it. So that's what started the movie nights. And so we basically knocked out, like, I'm talking about Thor Ragnarok, Spider-Man, both Avenger movies, the, the last two of them, both Ant-Mans. Like, we was just chopping it up and just Yo, so going I'm, all I'm the way back. With some unexpected joints, then. I need your top three Marvel movies right now, though. Top three Marvel movies. This is going to be very surprising for you. Number one probably has to be the first Iron Man. Um, I think. Whoa! Let me get my top three together while you talk. Go ahead. Uh, no, hold up. What am I talking about? Damn. No. What's up? So this is top three. No particular order. They yeah, all yeah. No, no worry about order. Yeah. Just top three. Um, they just brought Robert Downey Jr. went to a whole another level, and he was like the 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 epitome of like. Iron Man of Tony Starks and like he was just unconscious you know what I'm saying just like in his acting and stuff like that and I feel like he made that number two I, I'm gonna cheat here a little bit I'm gonna cheat here a little That's bit fine. you know what I'm saying number two the, the like last Spider-Man I really enjoyed that 
You know, okay, when you say last Spider Man, are you talking about the animated one? Or are you talking about the, the real life one? one? Oh, okay, so you're talking about a, a Far From Home? Yes, exactly. Okay, okay, okay. You know, it's a toss up between the last Avenger movies just because they're connected and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's a toss up. Uh, and number four, of course, Black Panther. I mean, we, we okay. you know, I think one, it did so much for the culture, the, it was so embraced Woo! by the culture. Yes, I agree. You know, you just never saw they just black people wasn't put into comic book into putting into comic book stories like that. Not and to see it and to see it done well, um, you had to give it props. I will say this: what I realized is this from watching all because like all, not also did I watch those, we've also watched uh all of WandaVision, all of Winter Soldier and Falcon, and all Ooh. of the Loki episodes. Oh you know? man, so you caught up for real. You in the game. We got conversations about that then, man. For real then. Bruh, I'm in it to win it. And okay. so this is and so this is what I've realized. Number okay. one, Disney know how to tell a great story. That's number one. Hands down. They 100. just 100. They just know how to tell a good story. 100. And I'm impressed how they've like totally done a 180 from like they're still doing their kitty stuff, but then able to jump into like this Marvel universe like they have done. Awesome. It's better than the X-Men movies, to be honest with you. you know oh, it saying? kills the X-Men movies. Kills you know? Them. Kills them. So Sad then. to say, but kills them. Yeah. Number two, they bought Marvel for $4 billion and they bought it for cheap. They bought it for oh, cheap. Oh, dog, dog. They bought it for nickels on the dollar, bro. And that's crazy to say. When somebody give you four, when someone pay four billion for something and it's nickels on the dollar. Nickels. Nickels, nickels. on the dollar. Because already they got 103 million subscribers. Let's just say that they're paying like $7 a month. That's like almost I think, $7 billion. Now, granted, they're going to they're going to invest about 8 to $9 billion in by 2024 per year, you know? But still, they make long-term investments. They... They probably already made that money back, and then they're gonna have they rides, do. toys, all that. It, it's they bought it for a discount, ninety percent off. They went to Walmart to go and buy Marvel, and they're making all their money in return. <laughs> and also with this, we've also been watching some of the DC stuff, and you can just tell the drastic difference. And you're just like, ah. The because, only thing DC does right, which is better, mm-hmm. their animated movies kill the Marvel, except for Spider Man is the Spider Verse. That's a difference. Mm. Spider Man Spider Verse is a whole different situation. But like, they're straight to DVD. Well, we should say DVD, but it's straight to like streaming, like cartoon type of stuff. It's been way better on DC. But I have not seen What If yet. And I know that What If just started. So I might want to reserve it until I see What If. I just heard about what if after I finished Loki, because yeah. you know I don't know if you finished Loki or not. Yeah, you know oh, I mean? yeah of course I did. Me, me, that 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 has been my wife and I's thing that we 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 watch Marvel stuff together. Oh, really? That, that's one of our that's one of our things. She loves Marvel, so yeah. We got to talk about Loki. We might need to get through it. We might we might have to throw a Loki episode up in here, y'all. Y'all yeah. might see a Loki episode. Yeah. yeah, we do. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. Cool. Then. And so, man, that's what we've been up to, man. Been hanging out with the family. My daughter, she doesn't start tumbling classes. So, cool, man, it's beautiful, man. You know that. You know that's 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 what we've been up to. So, I I I know an event just occurred, maybe about a week ago or something like that. Uh, I hope you're talking about what I think you're talking about. Uh, what you talking about? I'm talking about the decimation of Dipset <laughs> on a lot. <laughs> what? That was, what? That, that was rough. What happened, Willie? What so, happened? So, you know, there have mm-hmm. been a few verses. Some of them have been good. Some haven't been good. And we got to the point, I thought that, okay, I think we've reached this peak where the novelty of it is worn off. That's literally what I was thinking. And I'll be frank with you and say, I wasn't that excited about the locks versus dips. Uh, a lot of it is because I, I feel like the best ones were the ones that the people didn't have a lot in common with. Like for instance, like Rick Ross and Two Chains is one of the weaker ones. And it was weird it was. But then you throw Snoop and um 
DMX. DMX, and it was dope. It, but it wasn't competitive. It was a celebration. You know what I'm saying? And so when I saw Dipset versus Locks, I know they they get along very well, and so I didn't think there'd be competition. Then I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Jenny Kiss is involved. Styles P is involved. And Sheik Luch is involved. And those guys are competitive dudes. And they take their lyricism and performances very um, personally. So I know we talked about Red and Meth, about their professionalism on stage. I have yet to see the locks perform. I've, at least I have. I've seen Jaden Styles perform before. But Jada was really performing as a as a, a duo with Fabulous when they were doing their album thing. And I remember like how professional they were and how like how does Jada already know a lot of Fabulous and stuff? Like, like, like Jada was able to, to groove with Fabulous and stuff. Like, wow, he's studying, he prepared for this. That was something that resonated for me just watching it. Fast forward to this, and I should have saw what was gonna happen. So the hype of it was Jim Jones who is an Instagram guy, Cameron's an Instagram guy. And so they're doing all the social media posts. It's all funny and stuff like that. You're not really getting a lot of that on the lock side as much. You know, you got Sheik who's doing some, not Sheik, Sheik Styles doing stuff, but Jada's not really, and Sheik really isn't either. And so I remember getting into conversation with people who were like, Dipset going to kill them because Dipset has more mainstream hits. You know, they talked about Old Boy and Dipset Anthem. And um and a lot of other stuff that Cam has done. Um, you know, what means the world to you? Like they have a, a few really somewhat big mainstream hits, and then the locks as a group don't really have a lot of mainstream hits. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, dang, like, but then I I forgot that it was gonna be a performance, and I'm like, wait a minute, they're doing this at Madison Court Garden. I just I don't think Dipset does what they're doing, I don't think they need to prepare for this. And uh, the show starts freaking late. And I'm getting pissed off because it's like on a Tuesday or something, bro. I got work. You know what I'm saying? It's like 10 p.m. and they ain't really got started yet. Like, I'm about to go to bed. And they announced the lots come out. And they come out together. T-shirts, shorts, Tim slash sneakers, and ball caps. They look like they ready for a fight. Dip set. Jewels, Jimmy, Freaky, where's Cam? They flashy, they got stuff on. They don't, they're not, I'm not saying you gotta be matching, but it was like a different vibe from them. They didn't look together, they looked look like individual players. Cam comes on stage by himself and has one of his people set up a beach chair, which was taking way long because the announcer was like, What are y'all doing? Like, we're trying to get started. And then you got Jada and Styles and Sheik. They're just talking mad disrespectful shit. Like, yo, what are we doing? Let's get this started. And you can tell, like, they're professionals. At first, I thought it was blue. I'm like, no, they're professionals. They're like, yo, people are here. And I'm like, huh, okay. Also, I know they're renting out the Madison Square Garden. I can't imagine what that costs. So, like, even the producers and the DJs, and like Swiss and Timbo and the that, like, what are y'all doing? Get started. Cause I'm like, yo, like the locks are cognizant of stuff like that. They gotta get this show started. They finally get started. Cam's like, y'all are not even from here. Y'all because y'all is a suburb of New York City. And it's like y'all, you know, and, and Mass Regard is, is is in Manhattan, which shares the borough, you know, with Harlem. And so it's like y'all the waiting. And locks start off with fuck you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before that, you had Jada Kiss say, like, you don't even live in New York. You, li- oh, you live in Miami. Oh, in Miami. Oh. <laughs> Which brings to mind one of my favorite Jada Kiss lines from his beef with 50. King of New York, but you stay in Connecticut. Yeah, you got a felony, but you ain't got a predicate. Anyway, so, um, yeah, they come out. Jada's already on one. Heavy. You ain't even from you. You don't even live here. They start going through it, and you're starting to get the vibe already. The locks are professionals and they're MCs. They're vibing off each other. They're finishing each other's lines. They are coordinating. They're rehearsing. They're giving and going. And I'm sitting here like, huh. 
This is the NBA squad that shows up. And there's the and one squad over here. Yeah. Jim, they all got on different stuff. It's it's just not coordinated enough. They're saying stuff like, what y'all got on? What y'all wearing? I'm like, wait, whoa, what's, do they know what was happening? This is the locks. Y'all in New York. No offense, but some South cats probably could get away with some of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like Gucci could look at G's and be like, what the hell you got on? Yeah. Because that's more the, you know what I'm saying? But y'all 90s, y'all are mostly 90s hip hop from New York. And looking at the crowd that showed up, like there's some gullyish going on here. How was y'all prepared? And then it happens. They start playing their music and they got the lyric dubs playing. I caught that early. And I was like, I want, I really was like, I wonder if somebody gonna say something about it. This is whack. Like, cause Locke's just playing instrumentals. Which bring me to another thing. What's your thing, boy? The importance of your DJ. Ooh. Not all DJs are created equal. No, sir. No, sir. The locks DJ. And the locks. Well, I can step. Bruh. And I went and saw an interview later with Sheik, and he admitted to this. He's like, and the funny thing about it was, this is what I don't, old head moment. I'm, I'm putting my hand up, old head moment. So much of what hip hop is now is the, the applauding of unpreparation. So one of the, one of the worst things that happened was that when Jay-Z and Big E kiss, who else does this? They started talking about how they didn't, they didn't write their rhymes down. And so what happens is you have Wacker, or Wayne does it, Wayne too. And it's okay, yeah. Jay-Z and Wayne and Big E, Jada, fine. But what happens is you create the culture of this with people who, who are celebrating non-preparation. And so what happens is I saw on the trend thing, people literally saying, like, do these cats practice? And we're, like, putting, like, this is lame. Like, you know, I'm like, wow, like, this is crazy. Like, it also lets me know what type of hip-hop shows y'all go to. You know what I'm saying? The locks, Jay, she was like, yeah, like, we literally did rehearsals. We literally were like, if they play this song, we're going to do this. If they say this, because they were like, we know they're going to say we don't got girl songs with the girls. They know they're going to say that um that she admits this she's like i know i'm not the most main guy of the group and so but i know they we, we got to play some jada solo stuff some chic solo stuff they have stronger solo careers than me so sooner or later somebody gonna be like chic where your song at and they were like we're gonna play this verse and i'm like how else were you doing and you could tell the dip set that they just like we'll just play some shit we they were more concerned with their clothes and like 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 joel's look like a whole little like Eddie um, freaking Valentine from Trading Places. He looked like a hobo to me, but he's all like, nah, my, my skull cap was designed by this designer, and this is Louis, whatever. I don't know. And then Jim was doing the same thing, and so was Cameron and Freaky had, like on a Balenciaga sweatsuit. They look like clowns to me. They didn't look like a hip-hop show. But if they would have gone against somebody else, it would have fit. But not against the locks, because they in the New locks, York City. In, in New, New York, York City, City, it's the locks. I can't stress this out enough. MOP, the locks, boot camp click, Rockets, most of the woo don't show up with your. Whatever you got on. But if you're going against G Unit, all right. No diss the G Unit, but it would have been okay with them. It would have been, if you're going against ASAP Mob. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Like for real, I'm with you on that, Ashley. Yeah, you need to have your shit on. Not against the locks. I know I've been talking for a long time, Fred. I'm sorry, man. No, nah, um, man, go I ahead. This with one more thing. The locks are great, right? And I'm I'm happy they got their flowers, right? I'm, I I really am. 
but I'm super duper happy that a top tier MC got his flowers too. Oh, oh, yes. Now look, if anybody's critical, of Jada kisses me, because I still to this day, if I was Jada's friend, I would be like, call up Pete Rock, or call up, um. Everybody's calling up Alchemist and everybody's calling up uh, Mad Lib, but call up somebody. Call up Pete Rock or, or Dame Grease, not Swiss, no offense, Swiss, but you need to call up an M- a producer. They're going to give you 10 gritty joints. Call Preen, call Premier, somebody. I mean, a great producer, though. Not, you know, the people I just named were incredible. Call up one of them cats. Be like, we making the joint album together. I want you to do for me what Mad Lib did for Freddie Gibbs. I want you to do what Hit Boy is doing for Nas. I want one producer, one album, and we making a joint. And we doing this. Why isn't Jada Kiss doing this? It bothers me. That is the only thing keeping Jada Kiss from being in everybody's top ten. Period. He is a top tier performer. He cares. He raps his ass off. He got a unique voice. He just ain't got the album. And it made me happy to see the rest of the world be like, shit, Jada. And it was like everybody knew this, but it was like, shit, Jada crazy. Like Jada's out here Achilles and Cat. And he was perfect for this. And the fact that Dipset weren't prepared for this was just amazing. And, you know, she said that Puffy actually told them to make sure you embed some of those freestyles in the session because, you know, Dipset got going to have on mainstream hits for y'all. But this is New York. Y'all actually doing it in New York. And it's a live performance. So your freestyles and the mixtape cuts going to bang. If they did that in Miami or Atlanta, it wouldn't have worked. If they would have done that in L.A., it wouldn't have worked. But in New York, it's going to work. In Jersey, Connecticut, it's going to work. And so it worked. And Jay, but it's again, the freaking DJ. Oh, my God. The DJ knew when to put the, the fade stuff out for the accent, the key Jada lines. Of, of course, I'm going to say, you know what I'm saying? All flavors. You a pussy. You know, he's <laughs> you a dick. He's pussy. Y'all neighbors. And the fact that the DJ cut that to hear everybody say, then he replayed it back. Meanwhile, I don't know what was going on with Dipset DJ, but it sounded like their music was coming from an iPhone the whole night. <laughs> it was rough, bro. <laughs> no. I was like, yo, are y'all, are y'all, are y'all, are y'all, are y'all I really was like, are, are y'all playing music off of YouTube? It was like iPhone 3 versus iPhone 12 shit going on. Bro. Wow. Like it, the, the, the audio quality was like, you know, when you do down stuff off now, so you got some of those 112, you like, that's what I got. And then you think it sounds okay. And then the next song is off 256, and you're like, oh, snap. Like, I got to give me another version of the track eight. <laughs> the quality is just so different. But yeah, 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 it was bad. I mean, the, the, the who shot you? No, uh, freestyle, of course. Um, and then, like, even like little stuff, like they, they're family. So the fact that they let Sheik jump in and do the Reservoir Dogs joint as his highlight, you know, because Sheik spit the crap off Reservoir Dogs, and everybody had their moments. Sheik had their moment. Styles had their moment. The DJ cutting. Whereas on the dip set, it's like they were fighting for relevancy throughout the whole night. They didn't feel like. The shape, even Sheik was like saying, like, we're a group and they're a crew. And that's the difference. Also, I'm going to tell you what else. I'm, I'm, I'm finally I'm done after this. Nah, man. What, keep talking that talk, bro. This, what happened with this <clears throat> is also something, some real stuff. This is what happens when the scammers and the bullies get into a fight. So, look. I don't mean in a derogatory sense toward Dipset. Because, you know, I'm just saying that, like, you know, everybody thugging, right? So everybody thugging. What I mean by the scammers, I'm talking about those who cats do, like, the credit card stuff, they hustle, and they they the ones that get fresh. 
You know what I'm saying? They fresh. They still thugging. You still don't want to mess with them, but they the fresh dude. Those cats are going to style on you. They're going all the type of stuff at the event. They definitely gonna look. They're gonna look at the the bullies like y'all. These cruddy dudes. These dusty looking dudes. That's gonna happen. But they don't want to fight the bullies. They might even get the girls and stuff. But if a fight happens, I'm riding with the bullies. And that's what happened. The bullies showed up to a bully fight. And the scammers didn't realize that. And so that's what happened, bro. I, I still, I've not changed my opinion. I did say I think they were a great movement for what they were. But it just didn't age well. And it hasn't. Like, their stuff has not aged well. Like, it's funny. Like, me used, used to love, I keep computers pooping. I keep, I keep computers pooping. I keep the boosters boosting. He, that's what Cam played after Jada Kiss's freestyle. And it was crazy. I was just like, oh, this. Because I know it doesn't sound bad, but it sounds bad. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, because Jada over here dropping bars. One more, un- one more controversial thing. What's up? Talk it. Real controversial. I'm go ahead. I'm real threat to this. Now go ahead. I'm only talking bars. Not talking album, style, fashion. I'm just saying pure bars. None of the dipset dudes could be any of the locks dudes on bars. <sighs> Chic murking all of them though. And I'm not even gonna mention styles. And um, let's not even put Jade in this conversation. Bars. Another thing is dipset, their appeal. 65% of it was, was, was their beats. I'm done. I'm done. Take away the heat makers. They're not that impressive. You brought up the beats and they were outside of up. Cam, outside of Cam, especially. But Joel's and Jim Jones. Are below average MCs. <sighs> Joel's is above average with his beats. Like he goes from a five to a six and a half because of the beats. Jim Jones is under five regardless. Wow. But on his best day, Jim can be a seven. But overall, they got no smoke, no flex when it comes to Sheik, Styles, and Jada Kids. I'm done now. I'm really done now. Turn over to you. Willie Mac Hill just eviscerated, eviscerated my ears right now. He was spitting hot fire on the podcast. Still love Dipset, though. Still love him. Just, wow. Yeah, that hurt. That hurts to say. Man, I am. You may have a point with the beats because they were like rehash popular hip hop songs. Some of them, you know, like certified gangster and stuff like that. Yeah, you know I mean, just to name one, that kind of like the appeal was the beat. You know, heat makers would do all those fast light beats back then too. Like they they really had a niche a niche there. <sighs> Willie, I, 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 I can't touch that. I can only give my opinions on. Please what give I me saw. your opinion. I hope you I hope you disagree. Uh, so let's say this: one, your boys was in tune. Okay, the crowd was just so New York. It just had New York written all over it. It was just the energy, the vibe, the feel. I just felt like I was in the subway somewhere. I just feel like I was hanging out on the stoops. Italian ices. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was out there just, you know, I, I wanted to throw some shorts and some Tims on right now and just walk my block. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to do that. That's the vibe that it gave me. Cuban link it. chain on. Right, right, exactly. Small Cuban link chain, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't got the type of money like that. Small, yeah. small Cuban link. Uh, but... <laughs> But man, the energy was just so New York. And then similar to like how Gucci Man started his verses, he just came out. Once Jada Kiss said like, 
you don't even live here, you from Miami, and just play the record, it was just like, oh no, we in we're we're in for one right now. Yeah, you know I mean, I <laughs> they they kind of remind me of like when Golden State was just blew up on the scene for their first championship and were just splashing threes to everybody and they were just sharing the ball. It was just ta 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 ta. And you know your DJ just gotta be so connected with you on the whole nother like, of course they rehearsed. Of course they were prepared. You know what I'm saying? And you saw it. You saw it because you know like Cam if he was prepared he would not have played I got computers puking after that song. He would not have done that. But your boy Jada Kiss and the locks in them, they all knew they like they game plan. They game plan for this. They was Bill, they was Bill Belichick, you know what I'm saying? And the whole rest of them dip set folks with the rest of the NFL, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was just ridiculous. And I saw the interview too, where they said like they was practicing. They said that them boys was practicing all the time. Why Ready wouldn't you though? Why wouldn't you though? One of the highlights for me that I saw this. And where I was just like, because, you know, I've heard some of Jada Kiss stuff, you know, um, but where Jada Kiss, he knew the lyrics of the Dipset songs and was even ad-libbing on some of them. It sounded like he was ad-libbing on some of them for them. Bully. He was a bully. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, you got to have some cojones to just be like, not only am I going to shine on my track, but I'm gonna show you how to shine on your tracks. Oh, when he as said well. Jim didn't know how to flow off, he said, You didn't know how to flow your own song. Come on now, dog. Come Ooh. on now. Ooh. And Ooh. also earlier, too, I forgot what song it was. He was saying that, like, yo, 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 you wasn't even on that track with them when you joined Dipset. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't even on that track. Nah, 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 nah. You know. And they was trying to play the under the underdog card because he was saying, like, you know, we can't even get a fair shot. You know, the game is rigged. The game is rigged. New York <laughs> shit. New York shit. The, they had a chip on their shoulders. And you saw it. You know, they had a chip and they murked them. I love how, like, they and they embrace the challenge. Jada Kiss was just like, first of all, he was MVP in the rhyming and like the roasting of everybody. He he wasn't MC. He was the master of the ceremony. Bam. There you go. That's what he was. Yes. Yes. And that's perfect. He, he let you know how this is how you work the crowd. This is how you work the room. He read the room. And he excelled at it. You know what I'm saying? You know, he knew kind of like, yo, y'all probably going to play this and that and that. You know what I'm saying? He he was calling them out on it. All right, bring it out. Bring out such and such and such. Yeah, I better like, play balling sooner or later. <laughs> so that totally diminishes balling. Yes. He totally diminished it. Oh, so my When it came God. out, even the crowd was like, oh, so he finally put out balling. That is, that, that's crazy. Jada Kiss became so much likable. Even though he was a bully, he became likable. Yeah. He would have came to do in the lunchrooms cracking jokes on everybody. Yes. We all remember that guy from, the, from high school. It was beautiful, man. I, 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 it was a, I ma- it. It was a master class. Mm-hmm. And it, but, it was a master class. And the thing is, too, in that in an interview I saw with him, he was just like, Dipset left some stuff out that he like, mm, I'm glad they did not play. And that just showed you again how he they took them out of their game plan because he took Dipset had so many advantages, and Jada made those advantages seem like disadvantages. But it's the thing, like it's, it's like if it be like let's just say like someone's battling outcast. This is a good example for me. Let's just say name somebody from the south. Let's just say three six mafia is playing out play outcast, right? Mm-hmm. And let's just say Juicy J on the first or second song goes. Andre, you better not play none of that 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 uh alien ass wig shit. <laughs> as soon as that doesn't get played, three six mafia's won. 
if anything, Andre has to be like, the fuck? Damn right, I'm going to play my strange ass alien wig shit and then put on synthesizer, god damn it. And, and then you do it. That's anything. That's me and you playing. That's that's me and you playing the dozens. That's me and you playing basketball. That's me and you playing Street Fighter. You know what I'm saying? Just like playing Street Fighter in the arcade. And somebody's like, oh, you only win because you have to throw a fireball. It's part of the freaking character. You know what I'm saying? But but as soon as you someone says you like, man, you can only win with Ryu. That's who I play with. Now I'm gonna pick Chun Li and get my ass whooped. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but that happened to arcade all the time. Or play? Are you? You're a football guy. You're 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 you're, you're an athlete. Like if somebody playing one on one with you at basketball, it's like, man, you only win because you shoot threes. So I'm gonna stop shooting threes now. Right. Oh, I'm gonna stop posting up now. You only can you only can beat me because you bigger and stronger and faster than me. Yeah, yeah. That that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. But that that's what happens. We we've all been part of that. I have totally picked Chun Li to prove a point and got my ass whooped. And nobody cares. I, I lost. It is, no one's gonna hear. Well, I, I didn't play my best player. No, your ass got beat. If you play one on one somebody and you lose, and they're like, well, I only lost side and post up. Why'd you stop posting up? Right. I, he's still shooting threes. That's his strength. And Dipset just got thrown off, bro. Masterclass. Masterclass. Yeah. Uh, and they're all going on tour together. You, you know that, right? I did not know that, but it makes so sense. That was the that was the real catalyst. So, like, and this is one thing Jada Kiss said this is about Cam. He's mm-hmm. like, yo, I know y'all think we beef and we not. It's, it's all sport. He's like, they pissed off now. They they hot. But he said that Cam was the person who really negotiated a lot of the stuff and got them to get, you know, what they deserve. But also was like, yo, we, we got to go on tour after this. And so it's Dipset, the locks, and state property. Wow. Yeah. That's a you know, great You know concept. how we talked about tunnel music? He yeah, are old now, but this is the show we probably wouldn't have went to if it was. <laughs> <laughs> you like it starts off good, right? It's like well, Gibson's gonna be there. Oh, 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 okay, we on the line. Lots is gonna be there too. Ooh. Then they stay property. I'm not going. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. Make it. No beans. Beans in the building. No, I'm not gonna do that. I love Beans, though. I love Beans. Beans has yeah. a really good interview with uh, Noriega out from Drink Champs. Oh, he does? Okay. Beans. Yeah. He's getting, it sounds like he's getting his voice back slowly but surely. Um, I didn't know he lost his voice. What happened to his oh, voice? Oh, he totally lost his voice. I can't remember why. Some illness he had. Didn't take mm. it seriously. But, like, it, it's really more gravelly now. It's not that Mac bitch voice he used to have. But uh, I, I, and I don't know, you know... <laughs> Think about you and these shows like state properties are gonna be there, and you're like, oh, and then you show up, and it's no distance in the groups, but it's like well, Shino and Sparks and Beanie. You're like, oh, so look, Chris not here. Okay. P Crack's not here. Okay. All right. Freeway here. <laughs> you know, what I mean? so um, you know, you start, you know, but yeah, that's supposed to be the tour. Um, so I'm excited for that. But yeah, yeah, just Really good show. Even Dipset, like we've been clowning them whole start. They're still an incredible artist. But they just, but it's also, this is who they are. They are individual acts. They are ISO. They are three or four ISO players. And I think if they would have been prepared, it would have been, a, you know, a lot better for them. I still think they would have lost, but it was amazing that they did not see what was coming. Yo, man. So what we got planned for the future, man? What's your, what's your thoughts, man? Frito and Willie, where are we going next to, man? Oh uh, well, we do still have, I think, two episodes left of the Wu series. Um, season one. Season one. Um, season two of the Wu series is coming back. I'm really excited. Um, even though, you know, um the actor that played Deck, who of course is Joy Badass, uh, is not staying on the show. It's because he took a role on 50 Cent show um uh, Power Three. Um, as one of the um, antagonists. So he would not continue his role as Deck, which is disappointing because I thought he did a good job. Very limited in Decks, but um, I trust the show that is going to go. Also, I think um, 
I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I think Lala's gonna have a role in the show soon. Lala Anthony. Really? On the Wu show? show? I think so. I think that's wow. what I read. Okay. But, uh, but I'm excited they got a season two pickup because with COVID and everything, I don't know if you know, but a lot of series did not continue because for you know obvious reasons. So the fact that Hulu picked it up for another season, um, I'm really excited about, especially since I think that I well, I noticed the focus of the season is gonna be on the um the start of the 36 chambers out. And that you god, um, uh, you god will be featured and Master Killer. So those are two big things for me. Um, to see the full or close to the full Wu being featured on the show. So definitely gonna do that. Um, and then when we just go, you know, we hopefully stuff opens up. I've been met, nagging Frito that we need to go to some concerts together, and we both live in two highly metropolitan areas, Atlanta and DC. And he's from Miami, so we have connection to three places where we may not have to get a hotel room. And so uh, <laughs> that's, all, that's all about all about saving that cash. We own. We need the money. So um, so yeah, we have three located where we may not have to get a hotel room. So yeah, we we uh want to do more of that. But also we open to suggestions. Are there, if there are things that you guys guys would want us to talk more about, um doesn't always have to be super hip hop related. Like we we definitely gonna talk about Loki soon. Let us know man the things that you want us to talk about, discuss more. We're open, man. We, we're here for you guys. We, we enjoy it. We're, we're, we're great friends anyways. We'll be talking anyway. So just let us know, man. Turn Yo, back over to you free. Most deaf. Uh, speaking about shows that didn't get picked up for season two, I don't know if you ever watched this show, but Lovecraft Country. Did you watch that show? I did not. And I'm okay. going to tell you why I did. I will eventually. Um, but I can be real with you. Uh, I'm a little... I don't have the energy for... Uh, a lot of these shows that I think are going to invite some trauma for me. <laughs> and I mean that. Like, uh, so uh, I heard the show's incredible and I feel bad I haven't watched it, especially since it has Journey Smollett and it has, um, I think his name is Jonathan Majors. Uh, I think so. Mm, these are yeah. two actors. It's acting actor. I've been following Journey since she was on Full House. And so I, I love the stuff she's always in, whether it's Underground or The Great Debaters. She's an incredible actress. And Jonathan Majors has been killing it, not only in um, not only in that show, but he killed it in The Five Bloods. And I'm not going to do a spoiler, but he's also featured in other shows. Marvel, Marvel show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so um, these are two people I super, and, and uh, I uh, just lost the writer's name in my head, but I know she's um, been getting a lot of acclaim too. You know, black black producer, black rich shows. You know, that's usually my thing. But I'm just, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, stressed out right now. I will. It's gonna be one of those shows I pick up at like 2025 on HBO Max, and I'm gonna be watching and be like, oh yeah, let's talk about Lovecraft. Y'all gonna be like, what? Like that was six, seven years ago, really. But um, I'm excited. It was successful. I know it didn't get picked up. But for my friends who read more of the source material, they were like, it was a one season thing anyway. And I know that the writer, she just picked up some deal for another streaming service. So she's going to do something else. It's not known if it's going to be Lovecraft Country part two or season two, but she does have a, a jump start on something else. And so I am glad about that. And of course, Journey and Jonathan Majors, they're killing it out here. They got some stuff coming up too. Yeah, I'll just give a quick snippet just about Lovecraft Country because I, came up to it maybe about a year late as well my wife and other family members they were watching it when it was going on and yeah. so they was watching it in real time but for me i kept i watched it later uh i think it's an awesome show i think it <clears throat> showed uh the culture in a different light that i don't feel like has been shown in a lot of times um and i felt like yes the source material was used but within the show they had plenty plenty okay. of avenues to go in different places if they wanted to and i was actually quite shocked when season two didn't come out because i'm just like there's lesser stuff out there right now that has a season two and knowing hbo when something is not <clears throat> they want to keep around critically acclaimed shows because it's kind of like it boosts up their coffers now again i don't know if things have changed just because of the streaming wars and stuff like that um, but when a show was nominated for 18 Emmys, this That's is not crazy. And it, and it is hurtful that that did happen. I, I'm with you. I, I'm not making excuses for HBO because I feel like 
they have stretched other episodes and other seasons. I know they have. They have totally been like, it's the last season. And anything you know, we come back for another season. Veep is one of them. So, yeah. And I like Veep. No, no, I love Veep, though. I'm glad mm-hmm. they came back with it. Silicon Valley is another one that they that they kept it moving strong longer than I think it was intended. So, yeah, I feel Yeah. That. So, I don't know if costs had to come to do with it or anything like that. I don't know, you know. Um, but I definitely think it was a great show and definitely could have involved, could have evolved into something great, you know? Yeah. Even greater, I, I should say. Hopefully, <laughs> I will say this though like, uh, there are a lot of rumors of why it didn't get um, continued, a lot of rumors out there. I just, I'm proud that we have creators that are that realize that like where one door closes another like five more gonna open, mm-hmm. and so that's what I feel about it. Like I feel like because I know people who like cancel the HBO subscription. Okay, like we not not supporting it. I'm like I'm with you. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? I, I you know even though I haven't watched the show, I trust you guys' opinions more. You know you know greatly, especially when it comes from people that look like us. Um, but I'm glad that. She literally posted up the 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 uh the post was like, look, hey, hey, but we ain't stop. We don't stop. We're gonna do something else. And we've seen how this worked for other people. Jordan Peele, Issa Rae, people who've had doors closed in one way, and then they come up to something else. So I'm I'm excited for the future of her and um more art. Um, uh, and the fact that you saying it's been told a different way, you may serve as a catalyst for me to start there earlier. I'm just, I, I can admit it. I'm a little, 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 you know, done so many of these type of, and maybe this is not a type of show, but shows that talk about our past African-American culture in the past and the racism and stuff we're still going through. But like, it, to me, it's a little traumatic right now, but I will get to it. No, still, no, I'm not going to watch Day, though. I'm never going to watch Day. I haven't watched it. You know, I was I told from a friend never to watch it. Who I trust very much. They were like, okay. they were like, you know, Lovecraft County, definitely traumatic, definitely some painful moments, severely painful moments. But you feel like it's going somewhere. In their opinion, they was just trauma. Mm. It was just black trauma horror is the term. And it was like, I was like, Willie, really, I don't think you could watch it without. I was like, okay, fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely not. So Lovecraft, I've, I've heard, is not as much black trauma horror as I thought it was by looking at the previews. But I'm not signing up anything that's just straight black trauma horror. I'm just not going to do it. But I don't find that enjoyable anymore. Yeah. yeah. I can understand that. I can definitely understand. Oh, I want to spotlight one thing real quick, man. Sure, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's real spot quick, it up. Real quick. So I think I brought up my cousin a couple times. Yeah, he's on his own club, the Black Love Movement, and this is a jersey that he has for sale. As you can see, it's the Atlanta Atlanta Braves style with "Love Yourself." Um, eighteen, two thousand eighteen is when he started the brand. Be love. Uh, I will uh, I will try to remember to post a link in um in the in the video description of this. We post it. But yeah, man, my man out here, man, yeah, he got the jerseys. He gets some. Sh- I don't want to spoil it too much. Oh yeah, yeah, you bought the cap. Yeah, you got the cap. And um, he's doing some shoes now. He, I, I, he's, he's, he's starting to put some. He's working on some shoe branding right now. So, you know, I'm about this black entrepreneurship life. You know what I'm saying? Like I love Jordans. You know what I'm saying? But hey, man, my cousin come out with some shoes. I'm on my star spot. There you go, boy. You know what I'm saying? So I love it. I love it. I love it. You know what I'm saying? And if you have a business that, you know what I'm saying, that's something maybe we can do in the future too. Like uh, if there's a business that you have, maybe we can do a better job of spotlighting other businesses, especially that we use. Of course, we are, you know, there's another you know, entrepreneur, you know, right here, you know, over there. <laughs> Frito yeah. Mars, man. Mark <laughs> Naturals, baby. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I... And since you passed me the ball, um, one, so two things. One, there is Martus Naturals. Uh, my wife has a natural soap company. And so she's been at it for about four or five years, I want to say, going strong. So shouts out to her. You know what I mean, 
where is this boy Willie Mac here going? This dude is not. I just let you know about that life. I just this... let you know it ain't no game. <laughs> I just let you know it's not a game. This, this... yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just ordered some more. What was this? Charmo clay. Ah, oh, that my buddy up. I told him I was breaking out in acne a little bit after my workouts. This man takes me back within five minutes. So you need to you need to try the Charmo clay and the Queen of Hearts soaps. And I'm telling you, I've been using them. Yeah, man, definitely helping out with the acne after my workout. So yeah, man. Yo, thank you, Willie. That was a uh, that was a great segue. Thank you very much. I feel like totally man. unintended. I'm like, oh, I got a fresh. That was beautiful, man. That was beautiful. Uh, number two, uh, you know, you got to plug your wife. Uh, my, my wife and her sister, they've been doing a podcast for two years now. It's called Two Drunk Sisters. And um, they talk about sci-fi and horror films and TV shows and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Uh, so they get slizzard and they talk about stuff, you know? That's the premise of the show. That's dope. We got to do a guest. We got to do a guest version on that one day. I I don't know. My, my alcohol tolerance is real low, so I might only make it through the first 30 minutes. You said sci-fi and horror? Sci-fi and horror, man. That's what that they do. That is dope. So are they going to watch Candyman? Uh, first of all, they probably will. Like, if there's a horror film out there, they've probably watched it. I, am t I really want to know her thoughts. on. I I'm not going to watch it. I can't do it, bro. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I've reached that age where my sleep is so important to me and nightmares. I have a nightmare now. It's, I stay up a little bit afterwards after I wake up. So, and Candyman is one of those movies that traumatized me as a kid. Nah, bro. You're like, I'm done. Candyman. I'm done. So, we're Candyman. Mm -hmm. It. I don't like clowns. I don't like clowns. Like, look, if you, oh, you want to go. Party, yeah. If you have a birthday party for your daughter and there's a clown there, I may not show up. I don't like clowns. And I also don't like mascots. So like I have so I have a thing, I have to be able to see your face. So like if me and you are hanging out and Ronald McDonald or heck, Al the Gator, Florida Gators walked with us and started acting a little weird, I would I remove myself from the situation. Wow. I'd be like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk over here. And then number three, horror movie. People don't think this is a horror movie, but it is. But this movie has had the most traumatic effect on my life outside of it. Jaws, period. Jaws. Like, I swam in the, I got an ocean last year with my wife. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Like, I got out so far. And I was like, yeah, this is about it for me. <laughs> about it for you, boy. Oh. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> bringing jobs, bro. Oh, I watched as a child. I was like, I'm never getting in the ocean. Are you out of your mind? They out there. Uh, I think took down a whole boat. You couldn't oh. tell me. You could tell me jobs wasn't real, bro. Yeah, man. So yeah, that sounds dope, though. But I don't, yeah, I, I need to be some I've already watched though. I am ready for new scare. Like I can watch Jaws now, mm -hmm. and I can ooh. I can watch it now with the lights on. I'm mad to tell y'all the truth. I'm not watching Candyman ever again, though. Get that. Black man with a hook? Nah. Bro. Well, they got episodes where they talk about old stuff and new stuff. I think they bop going on their 100th episode soon, man. That's beautiful, bro. Oh, that's yeah. dope, man. That's super dope. Very proud of them, man. I got a, I got a, um, in fact, man, we've got to post a link of that, man, because I need to catch up and see. What movies I've seen that they talk about, I love to get their thoughts on. Okay, then bet that up, man. Bet that up. I'll definitely share that with you, man. No doubt. Yo, with that, man, we're excited what uh, season two has in store. Uh, we can't wait for the ride for y'all to join along the ride with us for this year. Uh, we appreciate all the love, you know. And um, shouts out to everybody. Please follow, like, subscribe on all social media sites. And with that, Willie, I think we out, man. All right, man. Peace.